Hello and welcome to Commodity Champions. I'm Anisha Gupta and the precious metals seem to be having a bullish run. The gold prices hit record highs and silver prices are surging on the back of geopolitical uncertainty in West Asia. China's stimulus measures and the optimism over the likely rate cut by the U.S. Federal Reserve. The all-time highs in prices for both of these metals are reflective of its global markets as well. In fact, silver has outperformed gold in not just the month of May, but in this year so far as well. Prices of the white metal are up by 33% in 2024 until now. Is silver now becoming the new gold for investors? We analyze the precious metal prices and demand trajectory with Philip Newman, Managing Director of Metal Focus, and Michael Renzio, President and CEO of the Silver Institute. Gentlemen, hi, thank you so much for joining us. And what a market, I'm sure both of you are busy watching prices and the kind of moves that the international markets really seem to be making on. Philip, the first question is to you. And with the gold prices at all-time highs, I mean, these are the targets that most Wall Street banks did put out, but they anticipated these prices by the end of this year or maybe next with the kind of run-up that we are seeing in this space first of all who do you think is buying and at what volumes um well first of all thanks for having me on again it's always good to be here i think the buying we're seeing is coming from um, a number of sources um i think equally the selling that we're seeing is, is also very limited I think investors um, aren't really willing to sort of bet against the market. Um, so I think, you know, we've seen in terms of institutional activity, be that in the US or in East Asia, I think that's certainly been, it's been part of this. Um, for example, if you look on the CME, the rise in the longs has been interesting. But equally, you have seen a small build up in net shorts. Or so it's rather gross shorts, but that's been very limited. Um, I think the other area of buying is from the central banks. Um, if you look at the figures that we reported to the, the World Gold Council for the first quarter, it was still exceptionally high as well. So I think the buying we're seeing has come from a number of different areas. And I think the final one that we're seeing is from high net worth investors, again, from a number of different areas across the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the kind of price move that we are looking at, Philip, how are you looking at prices from here on? Uh, does it look overbought, overstretched? Uh, do you think that the retail buying, especially in India, could take a hit because of this? Well, I think in, in India, we've certainly seen a pause in the past few days. Um, and as you know, you know, you've seen the price in rupee terms hitting record highs um, around sort of the seventy thousand, sorry, seventy four thousand dollar per ten gram level. So I think it's understandable that that buying will pause. Um, the likes of the US and Germany, from a retail standpoint, they're still pretty weak. Um, but when we think about the price, is it overextended? Possibly. I still think there'll be um, there's still room for a correction. Having said that, what we've seen over the past few months is just how well protected the downside has been. And every, any liquidations we've seen have certainly been very short term in nature. And you know, when we have seen prices dip, you know, equally we've seen investors coming in, um, so those bargain hop, um, opportunities coming into the market. Hmm. So I think those lows have been quite well defended. And that also suggests that any weakness we may see is likely to be pretty short lived. Um, and especially, you know, going to the second half of the year, if we do see um, a rate cut in the U.S., uh, even if that's you know, very, very few in nature, I think that would also encourage investors to come into the market as well. Mm, clearly. So, well, the gold prices, as Philip says, all declines are going to be short lived. So buying opportunities is something that you need to keep looking at. Michael, this one is to you. And it's not just gold. Silver is outperformed in the last one month or so. So while it has a rub off effect coming in from gold and copper on the other side, its own fundamentals itself are quite strong. Yeah. Thank you, Manisha, again for this opportunity. And hello, Philip. Um, yeah, silver is just really, really outperforming gold. Uh, you know, it, it, it's almost neck and neck with copper and the base metals with respect to its performance in 2024. Um, it broke $30 an ounce for the first time in decades. And, and that really is showing that there's strong demand on the investment side, on the industrial side. And as Philip mentioned, anticipation on uh, fresh Fed rate cuts uh, potentially coming uh, later this year. We're also seeing a cooling of inflation data here in the United States, at least. And... To add to that, 
uh, you know, we're predicting an, a, a fourth year, consecutive year of market deficits. Uh, we believe that silver industrial demand will hit a new peak in uh, 2024. And, you know, we can't overlook the geopolitical tension that's taking place across the world. And you put on top of that all these elections that are taking place across the world, um, and especially here in the United States. How will that impact the gold and silver prices? Clearly. There is a lot of safe haven buying coming in as well. Uh, you know, I, uh, uh, this one is to you, Philip, and I want to talk about the geopolitics as well. And there's plenty happening within West Asia, Middle East as well as, well it, as it were. Uh, do you see gold looking at a lot of safe haven buying? Central bank buying is something that you already alluded to. Uh, how much of buying are we seeing from within this part of the world? Well, as Mike's already touched on in terms of, you know, what's going on in the Middle East and elsewhere, I think, you know, as an investor, there are plenty of tail risks out there to suit your particular uh, investment strategy. So I think that's certainly the case. And if you go back a month or so, um, particularly in the Middle East, what was going on in terms of Iran and, and Israel, that obviously quietened down, relatively speaking. But of course, over the weekend, that became the focus again, particularly in terms of Iran, obviously. So I think that is certainly out there. Um, and again, if you're an investor, there are so many risks or potential risks um, to really encourage you to maintain you know, gold and silver in terms of your, uh, in, in terms of your portfolio. Mm. You talked about the industrial demand, Michael, and how do you and where do you see coming in from? Because uh, while we look at Indian markets, the kind of imports that we've seen until now in the first quarter and add the month of April to it as well is much higher than where we were last year. I have been speaking to a lot of people in India and they tell us that five and a half to 6,000 tons of imports in this year is what they are calculating. What is your sense? Yeah, it's been quite, quite, quite amazing. We're seeing the same numbers, Manisha, and quite frankly, this is primarily due to green energy programs that are, are, are ongoing in India. Um, you know, China, of course, is the leader with respect to photovoltaic uh, installations. Um, quite frankly, uh, PV and silver are go hand in hand. And what we're seeing last year, we saw an enormous increase, I believe it was 60%, um, in silver's demand uh, for photovoltaics. That was globally. And uh, we think this year is going to be strong as well. And India is going to help China pave that way. Mm. Michael, so, uh, you know, in sense of prices then, and 30 $32 dollars an ounce is, uh, uh, was a far away target, if anything, and we're sitting on that right now. What is your sense on where our silver price is headed? Well, look, at the silver price, uh, in relation to gold, silver can be much more volatile uh, than, um, than the gold price. Um, but the speed with which the gold-silver ratio has decreased has been quite dramatic. I mean, look, at we're looking at 76.3, I believe, uh, the ratio, uh, gold-silver ratio. And th th while this may suggest that silver is susceptible to a correction, we feel to the contrary. We feel that there may be some small decrease in the price, but we think that the table has been set for a rather dramatic 2024. And it's not just on the industrial demand side, but on the price side, more to your question, we're seeing strong retail demand. We're seeing talk of another silver squeeze um, in the online communities. And we're also seeing uh, that the ETFs are growing. The five major ETFs are up 20% this year. So when you look at both gold and silver on the silver side, silver is clearly outperforming gold. Um, and we think that uh, we haven't even reached a halfway mark yet. All right. We haven't reached the halfway mark yet. So clearly, very, very bullish cues coming in in case of silver there. Philip, this one is to an, another phenomenon really is about de-dollarization. I mean, uh, India, of course, is sitting very heavy on dollar as a reserve, but we also have been adding gold. China has been buying a lot, Russia on the other side, Turkey, Kazakhstan. A lot of these countries are buying a lot of gold for their reserves, the central bank buying that is. How do you see that one? And do you think de-dollarization on ground is actually happening, even if slow? I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head there, Manisha. So from a central bank standpoint, the, the gradual shift in terms of the uh, de-dollarization has been something that's been happening for, for many, many years. It's something we talk about um, in our annual gold focus, for example. I think there was certainly an acceleration 
in that trend after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Um, and so we, we've certainly seen that from a, you know, an increasing number of countries. So I think that's certainly one of the factors that's encouraging the central banks to, to buy. Um, you know, the figures I mentioned for, for Q1 was exceptionally high on a net basis. It was around the 300 tonne mark. So historically, very, very high. Um, will it continue at that level? It's exceptionally hard to say. But from our point of view, you know, central banks will you know, firmly remain on the demand side this year. You know, we've had record buying you know, the past year or so. So even if it doesn't hit the 23 or 22 levels, in absolute terms, it will still be a very healthy figure. And you know, I think the de-dollarization is, is something that will certainly underpin much of that. Hmm. Philip, uh, various reports and, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, surveys suggest that you could be looking at 2,500 and 2,700 and 3,000. And I've heard levels of 3,200 as well possible for this year itself. Uh, any sense that you see in all of these numbers? Well, you know, I think if you go back to the beginning of the year, you know, and we'll be the first to hold our hands up. But, you know, if we were talking about levels sustained around the twenty-three or $2,400 level, that certainly is something we didn't see happening. Or if we did see that, that perhaps the price would be overextended and you're quickly correct. Clearly, that's not the case. And as I mentioned earlier, just how well current levels, so, you know, any selling off, that downside is so well protected. You know, is 2,500 possible this year? It certainly seems on the car. The way that, you know, the markets reacted to perhaps news that the Fed may adopt a slightly more dovish stance. So I think the markets and investors in particular, you know, are looking at stories that are gold positive and are running with those. Uh, that sentiment is certainly fixated or is fixed on, you know, further upside. So I think 2,500 by year end or into early 2025 is certainly a, a possibility. Beyond that, I think, you know, I have to say that I'm still pretty sceptical. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, frankly, if we get to you know, 2,500, that will still be, mm. you know, exceptionally high. Bear in mind that the Q1 average was, you know, over $2,000. That's an exceptional average, you know, just for a three-month period. It is. And what a run-up is what we've seen in gold and silver. It's always a pleasure having both of you together. Thank you so much, Michael and Philip, for joining us today. And uh, we're wishing you a very happy weekend going forward. And, of course, we've noted down all of those numbers and fundamentals that you've just told us. Thank you. Appreciate your time. And with that, we're heading into a short break. But coming up, we shift the focus on silver prices and the gold prices within the Indian market with Kishore Runwal, Managing Director of Anmol Jewelers, and Ashish Pethe, partner at Maman Haripad. Welcome back and we shift focus now to the Indian markets as far as silver and the gold prices go and the markets therein. I'm joined by Kishore Unwal, he's Managing Director at Anmol Jewelers and Ashish Pete is partner at Vaman Hari Pete. Gentlemen, hi, thank you so much for joining us and uh, Ashish, I'll go to you first and uh, as Philip was saying that every decline in gold prices is going to be short-lived and there is buying not just from the central banks but from institutions, HNIs, the online buying also has been quite supportive. For the Indian markets, with the kind of prices that we're looking at, where do you see on who really is buying right now? Uh, good evening. Actually, uh, we were all seeing that our 2300 is the target for this year and uh, everyone has been making the same noise. Mm. But suddenly we are looking at uh, 2440 and uh, sitting pretty about 2400. So uh, most of the audience, I would say, investors as well as uh, consumers are a little perplexed. Mm. Uh, yes, the institutions, the banks, uh, China, everyone is buying. But in the domestic market, the, the retail consumer has taken a pause. I think uh, till about 70, 72,000, uh, the retail customer was buying. But once it went beyond uh, 73, 74,000, uh, there has been a lull at the uh, ground level. Maybe because it's results time uh, or uh, maybe the weddings are less this year. But we'll actually know who is actually buying uh, in the domestic market once the season comes in around uh, August, where the Ganesh Chaturthi and everything starts. So as of today, I think it's the institutions that are buying. The end consumer and investors are not currently buying. 
All right. So not too many people buying gold within the Indian markets there. One, there are no festivals and two, the wedding season are lesser this time around. But Ashish ji, uh, uh, even if, there, if one was to step out, I mean, this is something that I've been hearing from the market that with the kind of volatile and high gold prices that we have, uh, gold perhaps is selling at a discount in the Indian markets. Is that the case? Yes, it is uh, selling at a discount. That is always the case uh, when either the price goes down, uh, people sell at a slight premium and when the prices run away, it's always uh, sold at a discount because people are sitting on stocks uh, which are uh, at a lower price. They're bought at a lower price. But I think it's a, a natural phenomenon. It will uh, settle down in 10, 15 days and we should be on par. Okay. And uh, uh, Mr. Pete, also, what is your sense on people catching out at these levels? Is that happening in big numbers or that is something that Indians are also holding back on? Right. I remember uh, uh, two, three months back, I was talking to you and I said that uh, at around 70,000, there are no people who are rushing in to sell. That was a peculiar phenomenon that we saw in this last rally. But since it has gone beyond 73, 74, we are seeing some kind of uh, selling uh, in the retail level. Not a very huge selling, but yes, some kind of selling has come uh, in the market. People are uh, coming to sell their uh, old gold and old jewelry and uh, trying to probably cash in uh, the all-time highs that we are seeing. But it is nominal, not too much. All right. There's a rise for sure, but not too much. People are not rushing out, making queues uh, to sell their old gold and jewelry there. Uh, Mr. Anwal, this question is to you. Talk, let's talk about silver then. And there has been this sudden jump in silver. But that also is always the case because gold is this heavy, hefty commodity. And then silver is a smaller one. And we always see more volatile moves come in for silver. But at these current levels, first of all, your sense on prices. Where do you think it's going? Thank you, Manisha. The, we have heard about uh, Mr. Philip and Mr. Michael, who has given their opinion. But uh, seeing that today, silver looks like a black horse, mm. which, will, which is uh, running faster than the gold. Uh, silver is nearly touched 26% high in this month, uh, up to this uh, uh, May, if you see. And uh, gold is somewhere touched to 17%. Mm. So silver is running very high. It is uh, uh, catching up the speed. And uh, the experience of so many years, if I see, this, waves, uh, this wave is not uh, just uh, the end, but it looks in somewhere uh, in the middle. So we may see a much higher rate in coming days. Uh, so I think silver will go higher than 1 lakh. It should cross more than uh, 1 lakh in coming days. Okay. Um, since you mentioned about uh, Michael and he did say, Mr. Runwal, that these are perhaps half of where the prices could really go going forward. I mean, if you even if you look at it with that kind of a view, uh, are you looking at a 35 and a 40 and those kind of prices coming in for silver? See, as uh, we understand and the study reads, it says that there is a global demand in the manufacturing sector mm. for silver and uh, also the coming uh, interest uh, rates which may go down uh, to back to back in two quarters so we see that this will give more strength for the for the speed of the silver to go up and uh, 35 this year uh, maybe a little fall correction again a bounce correction bounce so we may uh, i it, it may be a possibility that we may touch 35. It is uh, not uh, that uh, uh, I don't think uh, we may not touch. It may touch 35 in coming days. Oh, absolutely. Nothing is not possible anymore. The kind of run-up that we've seen in gold and silver prices, even copper for that matter, there are these are levels that people uh, don't shy back on uh, in sense of where the prices can go. So if you think that $35 on the higher side is a resistance, where do you see, you see a support? Because as you said, it's going to be volatile. It will see its corrections as well. So where do you see the support coming in? Coming in money-wise, if I see now uh, 1 lakh, if we if we touch 1 lakh, it is already 96,000 in the Indian markets today. Mm. So uh, if uh, on the first correction I see at the 1 lakh level, we will see a good selling coming in in the Indian markets. Okay. The next, uh, if we sustain 1 lakh and we cross 1 lakh, then 1 lakh 10,000 is what I assume mm. that it may touch in the Indian Valley value report, if you see. Hmm. And as is the case, as I was talking to Mr. Pete, do you see that happen in silver? Do you see people coming uh, to the markets to sell old silver, family silver to encash in these kind of prices? 
Actually, the Indians, I think they are still waiting for the prices to jump higher. Mm -hmm. They are waiting for uh, the silver to cross 1 lakh. And when 1 lakh it touches, I think you will get a good selling uh, uh, silver in the market. People will come out to sell it to gain their profits, no doubt about it. But parallelly, you will see, again, a little portion of new investors also coming at higher rate, assuming, assuming that silver will touch more high. Mm. All right. So this is something that I want to ask both of you. And Mr. Pete, I'll come to you first. As we've seen prices gain, there are various newer ways now of owning these precious metals. Physical, of course, continues to be and will perhaps be the largest way of owning gold. But with the way we've seen gold bonds and digital gold and gold ETFs, I mean, all of these numbers and avenues have done quite well too. With the younger generation, as we move more into a 24 by 7 kind of a market, do you see these avenues grow higher? Uh, yes, uh, the other avenues have been growing higher, but uh, surprisingly, the speed uh, of uh, other avenues growing has not been as much as I was expecting myself personally. Mm. So still, the bond and the physical gold are still uh, ruling the roost. I think they are still uh, preferred even by the uh, younger generations. If at all, they are going towards the digital gold, uh, where all the online uh, people are offering. So that's where uh, I am seeing some kind of traction but otherwise it is the uh, bonds and uh, physical gold where i think the maximum buying is happening okay also mr Petri, what's your sense on the prices from here on what is the range that you're working with for the rest of this year right uh 24 40 all-time high hmm. i think uh, these levels are uh, everyone especially jewelers have to be very very careful now i think we have run up quite a lot so I see a, a top shot of 5% or 6% more, but there is a quite a strong possibility of 7-8% correction from this level also. So I think that's the point. This is the point where uh, jewelers have to be careful and uh, have to look at their hedging positions uh, you know, going into the, uh, the market. And also at the time of uh, you know, the season coming in, they have to be very careful. Oh, well, absolutely. With the kind of volatile moves that we are seeing, consumers is one part of this market, but industry definitely the other very stronger part because with the kind of volatile moves, the hedging positions, the kind of inventories that they have, have to hold is, is, is going to be quite unmanageable there. Uh, but this one is to you, Mr. Renwal. So what is your sense of the various ways of owning silver? What is your sense on what kind of buying would we see? Uh, you know, this, this is a very standard of seven to 800 uh, tons of gold coming in, five to 6,000 tons of silver being imported into the country. But are you looking at that kind of a demand continuing with these current prices? Uh, see, as I told you before, that every uh, hike, if the ma market is stable, this year we are going to cross 6,000 to 7,000 tons of uh, silver. Mm -hmm. But if the demand, if the silver rates are going high, then you, you will see a correction. The markets will go, uh, go very slow uh, in case of investment type and uh, physical buying in articles and silver jewelry. But uh, the global uh, demand for the industrial, uh, uh, for the silver is not going to go down because as the global economy is booming, mm -hmm. we will see that silver at that point, which is 40% of the purchase of silver in the whole world, silver will have its uh, uh, better, uh, better stand in uh, getting sold in the industrial belt. Mm -hmm. But uh, as prices go up, if the rates are stable, the only problem is the every uh, inch what we see Every week, if there is a surge, if there is a rise, the silver demands is surely going to go down in physical markets. Okay. So higher prices is something that the Indians don't mind, but it is the volatility which is perhaps keeping yes. them on the sidelines. Exactly. Once that is sorted, you will see buyers come back into the market. And of course, as and when we go ahead, the wedding and the festival season begins is when you will see Indians coming in and buying. Mr. Yes. Pete and Mr. Rinwal, thank you so much for joining us with that sense. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Commodity Champions. Thank you for watching.